If you've got a fairly small and simple business and you'd like to do your bookkeeping without spending a fortune on software like Xero or QuickBooks, you might like to try our free bookkeeping template for Microsoft Excel. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below and tell us where to send it and an email will be sent to you with the instructions on how to download a copy. And while the free version is totally free for you to use forever, if you need something a little more sophisticated that can do things like track your sales tax, VAT or GST, or provide a month by month income statement, feel free to check out our low cost advanced templates as well, which I've provided a link to in the description below. But for now, just go ahead and grab a copy of the free version and then watch the rest of this video where I'll show you how to use it. Okay, so I'm over here in Excel now and I've just downloaded the template and opened it up in Excel. And the first thing I'll show you is just how to save a copy. So if you just navigate up to file and then save as, and then just click on browse and then just choose whatever folder you want to save the template in and give it a name. Okay, so if you're doing the bookkeeping for your business for 2025, for example, you might just want to name the file after your business and then put the year 2025 and then click on save. And if we just go back into file and open and browse. So now I've got the copy that I can use for my 2025 bookkeeping. And I've also got the blank template that I can keep to make a copy of in future when it comes time to do my 2026 bookkeeping, 2027, etc., or even do the bookkeeping for another business. Okay, so let's go back into our 2025 copy. And the next thing I'll show you is that there's four main tabs. So there's business details, chart of accounts, transactions, and then an income statement. So if we start off at business details, I'll just show you that for all of these tabs, you can only type information into yellow cells. If you try to type information into any other cells, such as those white cells or these blue cells, you'll get an error message. And the same goes for all the other tabs. Okay, so let's start off by entering our business name. And the next thing you need to do is just choose the start month for your accounting period. So I'll choose January and then just type in the year and then the start of the date range and the end of the date range for your accounts will automatically populate down here. So as you can see, I'm going to be doing the bookkeeping for the 12 month period starting 1st of January, 2025 through to the 31st of December, 2025. Okay, so the next thing to do is go to the chart of accounts and here you can enter up to five revenue accounts and 20 expense accounts. So all you need to do is just type the names of those revenues and expenses into the yellow cells, just like that. So I put this in assuming that I'm running a business where I sell products on Etsy and Shopify and also for cash. So that's how I've categorized my revenue. You might have a different kind of business and you can categorize your revenue lines however you like. So I'll just put a few expense lines in as well. Okay, so I've just put a few expense lines in there just to demonstrate how this works. I've got Etsy fees, Shopify fees and inventory purchases. So let's go over to the transactions tab now. And as you can see, you can enter up to 500 transactions here. All right, so I'll show you how to enter the transactions and I'll also show you some of the built-in error checking. So first of all, for every transaction, you need to enter a date. So I've got my first transaction on the 1st of January 25, and you might remember that that's the start date of my financial period. If I was to enter a date earlier than that, so let's say 31st of December, 2024, I'll get an error message saying that I need to enter a date within my chosen date range. Okay, so you can't enter dates outside of the date range there on your business details tab. For the category name, a drop down box will appear that shows the revenue and expense categories that you've set up in the chart of accounts. So you just need to choose one of those, put in the amount. So for revenues, you just put in the number as a positive. There's an optional description 
You don't have to fill this out if you don't want to. I'll just put a little description in there for the product. There's also a reference over here. So this is useful if, for example, you've got an invoice number, you can just type it in here. Again, this is optional. You don't have to fill this in. And then in the document column, if you want to hyperlink to a document that you've got saved, maybe on the cloud somewhere, you can just create the link right there. Okay, so that's one sales transaction. We'll just have a look at how that flows through to the income statement. And there you can see we've got our revenue categories here and we've got the $100 that we entered as an amount. And then down below, we've got the expense lines. We only entered in three and there's room for the rest of them down there. And at the moment we're showing $100 profit. Okay, so let's just enter in a couple more transactions. Okay, so I've just entered in a refund through Etsy. And as you can see, I've put that through as a minus. If we come over to the income statement, you can see that indeed that's come through as a minus. And the same principle applies for Shopify sales and refunds and also cash sales. So sales need to be input as a positive number and refunds as a negative number. And once again, you can fill out the description, reference and document sections if you want to, but they're not compulsory. Okay, let's put in an expense now. And I'll put that in as a minus and we come over to the income statement. And as you can see, that's come through as a minus. So we have net revenue of $80, which is the $100 sale minus the $20 refund. And then we also have $1.50 worth of expenses there. So our net profit is $78.50. Okay, so that's basically how it works. So you can go ahead and enter your transactions one by one for your business within that date range. And once you have all of your transactions in there, you can check out whether you're making a profit or a loss over on the income statement. Okay, I'll just show you a little bit more error checking that's built in. So if I put an amount here, you can see that an error message has appeared at the top saying check transactions for errors. And that's because we've entered an amount, but we haven't entered a date and we haven't chosen a category name. So if we were to enter a date here, that cell is no longer highlighted red. And if we choose a category name, that cell is no longer highlighted red. The error message has disappeared and the transaction now flows through to the income statement. Now, if you are missing any of these details, so if I press delete there, the transaction will not flow through. So the transaction amounts will not flow through to the income statement until the date, category name and amount are all filled out for the transaction. Okay, another thing I'll show you is that if you've missed a transaction, so let's say we've got another one here on the 3rd of January that we forgot to enter in back here. We can put this into date order by simply clicking on here and sorting oldest to newest. And as you can see, that 3rd of January Shopify sale for $15 has now moved up and it's all in date order. And also that blank line that was in between is gone. So you can enter transactions later on and then just use this tool to reorder the transactions. And you can also sort newest date to oldest date if you prefer. Okay, so that's some of the error checking that's built in and that's how the transaction tab works. And like I said before, you can just come over to your income statement anytime and just track each individual revenue and expense line and also your total profit and loss by currency and by percentage. So that's it for the tour of the template. I hope it helps you to do your bookkeeping for free. And like I said earlier, if you need something a bit more sophisticated, then go ahead and check out our low cost advanced templates. And of course, feel free to email us if you have any questions or suggestions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.